Every time Google rolls out a new feature, it seems like it's more of a black box than any of the features that came before it. Now, Performance Max is probably the most recent and the more egregious offender in that category, but one of the first ones was responsive search ads. They rolled out and they had far less reporting than what the expanded text ads or just regular text ads had before. But in a trend that seems to be picking up some steam, it does seem like all of these features, whether Performance Max or responsive search ads, are getting a little bit more transparency. And personally, I'm a big fan of that. So in this video, let's do a quick recap of why responsive search ads were hard to report on, talk about what's changing and how it can impact your future ad copy testing. As a quick refresher, we're gonna go over how responsive search ads work and rather than trying to put in extra work and spend extra time to make something Paid Media Pros branded, I'm just gonna borrow something from our friends at WordStream. They put together this graphic. I think it does a great job. We're just gonna use it. For responsive search ads, if you're not familiar with them, on the left, you'll see you provide the assets. There are headlines and descriptions. You can add up to 15 headlines and up to four descriptions, but the minimum number is three headlines and two descriptions. And then over on the right, Google will build the ad based on what you give it and what the searcher searched, the search query, and a number of other indicators depending on lots of other campaign settings that you have. But in the example here, you can see that Google used headlines six, three, and five, and descriptions one and four. So effectively, any of the 15 headlines, any of the four descriptions you use can be in that ad. Now there are some ways that you can control this by limiting the number of variants or using different pins for your headlines and descriptions. We have a video that talks about how you can create different templates and test different messaging pieces. You can check that video out in the top of the screen right now. But effectively, this is how responsive search ads work. Once you have your ads running for a while, Obviously, you want to know how they're doing and you want to report on the performance so that you can test and iterate and make better performing ads, right? That's what we all want. So I'm in a client account and apologies that everything is going to have to be blurred out for this, but you'll still get to understand how we're reviewing the ad copy for performance. Each of these different line items is a responsive search ad. It can each have the 15 headlines and four descriptions, and then Google gives us all of the performance stats over here off on the right. Now for these, we can customize these columns to our heart's content. You can do pretty much whatever you want. All the columns are here, whether it's performance, conversions, all this good stuff. Now the problem comes in when you wanna know which headlines and descriptions are performing best. If you don't have your ads completely locked down as if they're an expanded text ad, there's potential for your headlines and descriptions to show in all different combinations, and we wanna know which is performing best. Previously, the solution that Google gave to us would be going to each individual ad and clicking View Asset Details. You'll then see the ad strength, all that good stuff, but if we scroll down, we have this data table of performance We'll be able to see all the different components of the ads and that includes the headlines and descriptions that you can see in the asset type here but it also will include the different assets whether they're images call outs site links all that good stuff that are also being shown along with these ads but you'll notice something here performance is measured as good learning just good and learning pending best okay we can then see the different impression counts but as you'll notice up here, there's no place to add any more columns. None of those super fun, fancy columns that we got to see at the ad level. For a very long time, this type of reporting has made ad copy testing almost impossible. Sure, you can kind of understand which are performing best because Google's gonna show them more often, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the better performer. And I'm sorry, but good and best and learning and pending don't mean anything anything to me when it comes to actual performance. And I can also tell you that any higher ups in the company really didn't like this type of insight either. But that's the reason for this video today. Google is now changing how it's reporting out all of the different performance metrics for your individual headlines and descriptions in your responsive search ads. So let's hop into another client account that we have. Now in this account, I'm on an ads tab within a specific campaign that I know has at least some conversions, not a lot of data just yet, but that's okay. And if I try to do the same view here, I can come over to view asset details. 
you'll still see the add strength up at the top. But then once we get down into the data table, now you can start to see that there's performance metrics for each of these. There's none of this good, better, best crap. There's actual impressions, clicks, cost, conversions, and conversion value associated. And yes, some of these are going to be the business logo that's set up at the campaign level. Some of them are call outs that are set up at the account level, but we also have descriptions that are set up at the ad level, as well as headlines that are also at the ad level. Now, while it might not be the most robust set of numbers, you still can have some pretty well built out sets of columns. For some reason in my view today, I can only see conversions and attributes showing up here. But I know darn well that there's going to be other performance metrics like clicks, impressions, cost, probably click through rate, probably average CPC. But right now in the interface, it's hidden. There we go. It's hidden under this banner. So if you come in here yourself and you only see conversions and attributes, somebody has not done a good job on formatting on this. You'll still be able to see click through rate and average CPC if you want to. But now we actually get insights into which headlines and descriptions are driving conversions. Now, one note you'll see up here at the top, full asset statistics will be available from June 5th, 2025 onward. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to go back to what might be the lifetime of your ads to know which headlines and descriptions have performed best, but you'll at least be able to see it from June 5th moving forward. Now, not only can we see this at the view asset details level for each individual ad, but if I come over here to assets, this is normally the area where you would look to see how your site links, call outs, structured snippets, all those good things are performing. But if we scroll down just a bit, you'll notice that there's an ad headline and an ad description, and they have all the same performance stats here. So now not only can we report on this at the ad level, we can also report on it at a campaign or account level pull all of this data out of Google ads and combine it to see how each of the different headlines and descriptions are performing rather than trying to compare one at a time, each of these different line items in the interface. Now I do want you to know how to read this report. Let's take just this ad unit that's right here. Right now, the way that this is filtered, I can infer because there's the same conversion number here that this ad had this headline and this headline, and then these two descriptions shown and those are what generated this 0.34 conversions probably was just on one click, but they all were shown when that action was taken. So they're each given the same amount of credit here, but they all haven't been shown the same number of impressions. They all haven't been clicked on the same amount of times. So even though they generated all these conversions one time together, they've been in all sorts of different combinations and have shown in all different sorts of stats. So you will get to see that on average, an ad that contains this description has a 6.62% click through rate and an ad that has this description has a 6.37% click through rate. This is effectively how you'll be able to tell on average, which ones are probably driving more engagement and more conversions. Now I do have these all sorted in a different way, but one thing that I really liked about this is if you come up here to segment right now, these are grouped by what it's added to. So that's why there's this line item here for an individual ad in an ad group in a campaign. And there's another one down here that's separated differently. Sorry, all this is blurred out, but that's why you're seeing these line breaks in here. But if we group these by none or type, I like none better. We can then start to see which assets are driving the highest number of conversions. Business logo is doing the most because it's showing up probably everywhere, but this description is doing really well. So is this headline. So maybe next time around, I'm going to continue leveraging these pieces, but maybe not include things that don't look quite as strong. If you want to review just the individual asset types, you can group by type. And now we have all of the headlines in the same spot. So at a glance, you can see which ones perform best, even though they are still broken up by the different ad level and ad groups, because these two are the same headline, but they have different performance stats because they were shown in different ad groups. That's why I would say pull these out, use a pivot table in Excel, but either way, this is way better reporting than we've ever gotten on these in the past. As you can see, this is quite a big difference in reporting compared to what we used to get when there were just weird word indicators as to how things were doing. In my mind, this is a huge improvement over what we've had for a long time. And this is actually going to make ad copy testing and understanding what messaging is resonating best with your clientele completely different than it has been. 
this was going to be a great improvement on that. And we can actually go back to utilizing actual insights and performance data to understand why one message is performing better than the other and continuously test and iterate and see what is more compelling and what drives action from your responsive search ads. If you have any additional questions about these changes to the responsive search ads reporting or any questions about ad copy testing in general, we would love to hear about them in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.